I'm not sure where to begin my stance on this Dodgers Padres series, but one thing is for certain, this is a rivalry. And this is not only a rivalry, this is a heated rivalry. And ever since the inclusion of my channel way back in 2020, we saw these teams face off in that 2020 season and in the postseason. We saw them again in 2022, face off in the postseason. Now we're getting it again in 2024, and these teams certainly do not like each other. The Dodgers and the Padres rivalry goes way back, way back for years. The Padres don't have the hardware to show for it, but certainly they don't like us, and we don't like them. The Dodgers may have gotten lucky in Game 1, and, and again, I'm not taking away credit to the Dodgers' Game 1 victory. It was a great comeback when Yamamoto could not set the tone. As I talked about, it was a really key thing to do. He couldn't do it. Shohei Otani comes up in this moment. Of course, Shohei Otani, we expected him to shine. He is shining. I had no doubt he was going to smack, smack out of that ball when he did, and he certainly did. That chuck and all, that is what I'm talking about. That is the killer that I want on my Dodger team, and he is certainly that. Uh, despite his bad game two, we'll get to that. Dodgers able to win game one, and Dave Roberts does a pretty good job of managing the bullpen for the first seven innings, and then he gets cute, bringing in Kopech, not his uh, normal inning position where he comes in. He's a ninth inning guy only, churning. I was at the game last week where he mowed down that same heart of the party lineup. I don't want to hear that excuse. Oh, it's the heart of the party lineup. Blake Trinan just did that. So why take him out of their normal position? I don't know. Then he hangs on with Lake Charney for 40 pitches, five out save. That is just ridiculous. And we certainly got lucky. Charney left the base load in the eighth inning. The go ahead run into play at the ninth inning and we just escaped. Uh, luckily we did. I'm, I'm glad we did because it was a big game to win. The Padres have shown us in both games that they could win and put up a, a, a bunch of runs. Okay, now. Uh, I certainly expect a lower scoring offensive games from the Padres at Petco Park. Uh, we'll see if that is to be true, but I expect the Padres not to put up 15 runs in two games, uh, maybe 10 in two games, but we'll see. I expect lower scoring games at Petco Park. We get to game two, and this is a must win game. This is a must win game. You have to at some point Put the foot on the throat of your opponent. I remember the last time we had a 2-0 lead in a series. I understand postseason baseball is not easy, but my oh my. Put your foot on the throat. You're at home. You have the home field advantage for a reason. Take advantage of it, but no, they can't do that. Quite frankly, the fans showed more fight last night than the, Fodger, than the Dodger players did. And listen, I've been to my fair share of Dodger games. Uh, Dodger postseason games. I've been to roughly 172 Dodger games in my life. I've been around town, and uh, you know what? I, I understand in postseason environments that stadium can get tense. Uh, it doesn't happen every postseason game. I, I will say that it's certain games that just mean a little bit more. I think, and this series, uh, it really has shown that these this games, this series means a lot. Uh, to this team and to this fan base. I've seen Dodger fans throw balls at players like they did throw balls at Jerickson Pro Far. That one buffoon that couldn't make the catch in the first inning on Mookie Betts' home run, all you have to do is literally just put your body on it. So far, being the good sport that he is, you know, he, he, he gave some antics to that fan, but he made a good catch. It's a postseason game, it's a rivalry game, whatever. Pro Far, being the good dude that he is, goes later in the game to give that same buffoon fan a ball and then when Profar hands in the ball that buffoon just throws the ball right back into the field of play and the fireworks would ensue um i do not condone that uh behavior by dodger fans i want my stadium to be rowdy i want my fans to be intense on top of the players all that chit chatting back and forth i think it's great tatis you know trolling the fans out the right foot i think it's great i, I really do but do not throw stuff at players. Like, that's not what you're supposed to do. And I don't condone that as the Dodger way. Uh, you guys know me as a pretty, you know, big Dodger fan here. Um, hopefully, you guys don't hate me or, you know, portray me as one of those fans. Because I'm certainly not one of those fans that throws objects at players and whatnot. Um, I respect the game of baseball. At the end of the day, I am a baseball fan. And these guys are entertainers. And they entertain us. And they're baseball players. And... 
Uh, they get paid a lot of money to, to do what they do. So don't throw in objects on the field. I've seen Dodger fans throw objects on the field, like I said, in postseason games, a 21 wild card game. Even though we won that game, the Dodger fans trashed the field. I, I didn't throw any trash, but they trashed the field after we won the game because there was so much tense energy in that crowd. We needed that when we could not get knocked out in the wild card game that season. And we just kind of let it all out, I guess. But again, that's not the way to go about things. And I don't like throwing trash. I, I, I just think it's a really trashy look. It is. It is a trashy look. And um, it is a, I don't know how we'll repair it, but I just want to give a good image when I do go to these ball games and talk about the Dodgers or whatever that there is a good side to this team and fan base and there's just a lot of um buffoons or, or bad apples as people like to say um i'm not one of them i will say once again but uh the dodgers just just got beat down um they got beat down uh to the surprise of um well depending how you look at it, it's uh many people or maybe no one people are picking the Padres. i picked the dodgers to get the benefit of the doubt and by the way Padres friends Prove me wrong. I have the over on half an object thrown at a Dodger player this year. I have the over on half an object. So I would be pretty pleasantly surprised if no Padre fans throw anything at Dodger players. So go ahead and prove me wrong, but I'm expecting it. Like, I think it's going to get pretty nasty. Let's see if they can prove me wrong. Ugly series so far. Just really bad blood. Uh, it, it does make for some entertaining baseball and, and TV and whatnot. And so hopefully the Dodgers can... Uh, rise up to the occasion in a hostile environment at Petco Park and, and strain together a couple of wins or at the very least split and get back home for game five and uh yeah there might be a game five so th that might be a thing um I don't know if I'm looking forward to that game five or not but so regardless uh two games in Petco Park let me know your guys thoughts down below in the comment section who is winning this series the Dodgers or the Padres Dodgers or Padres fans chime off below again it's all fair game down below in the comment section uh, I just want to see good baseball and hopefully see my team advance for the first time in like three years to the NLCS. Um, but Dave Roberts at the helm and, and the way their philosophy goes with the Dodgers, Upper Brass, and Dave Roberts, I have my concerns because we're seeing it on display in this series. Uh, Freddie Freeman might also be hurt, so that doesn't help anything. But uh, yeah, man, just, just really bad baseball by the Dodgers uh, to just get beat down on your home field like that. Not only this series, but they did it last series as well. They got absolutely be down something got to change and i think i know who's got to change so once again i'm gonna sign off and i'll be talking to you guys again in a couple days